It's no doubt that the Dream SP has taken over the Minecraft community and has brought much more than just new creators to the scene. They have completely revolutionized Minecraft content and have created some of the most interesting storylines any game has ever seen. But not everyone has a chance to watch every stream or video because it would just simply take too long. And that's where I come into play. Because for today only, I am going to become your history teacher and educate you on everything that has took place on the Dream SP in 20. 21. But just before we begin, make sure you're subscribed because YouTube unsubscribes people. So scroll down and click that big fat red subscribe button. Yeah, no one has to subscribe and follow my Twitch if you want to see more of this handsome strawberry. <laughs> it's the 1st of January 2021. And on the Dream SMP, absolutely nothing happens. No, literally, nothing happened. The date is now the 7th of January, and this is where our story starts. After the complete destruction from the Doomsday War, Turbo takes a look at the remains of what was once Lamanberg. He decides that there is no place to call home anymore, and that he has lost everything. But with one spark of hope, Turbo sets off on a journey to begin a new age, a new nation which would be called Snowchester. This is a place of peace, apart from that one time where him and Jack Manifold decided to launch a large nuke, almost killing Tommy in it. But that doesn't matter. Turbo begins to create his nation. He flattens the land, chops down a forest, and begins to build the very first house of this abnormally small nation. Like, I've never seen a place so small. A few hours later, Tommy logs onto the server, and just like Turbo did, he observes the remains of the great Lamanberg. He sees how the creator reached bedrock level, fulfilling dream of his evil master plan. This angers Tommy, and he reminds himself that maybe it isn't too late to destroy Dream and take him down. He begins to rummage through his remaining supplies and sets off on a journey to find Tobo. When the pair meet, Tommy questions Tobo, asking, why did you run? But Tobo responds saying he wants to stay far away from the noise and that he doesn't need to be associated with Lamanberg anymore. Why are you out here alone? I want somewhere to stay away from all the noise of the SMP, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but why now? Why now? Because Lamanberg's gone. I don't have an obligation to stay there anymore. However, Tommy tries to explain how every bad thing that's ever took place has stemmed from Dream. He says how he wants his discs back, and this is the perfect opportunity since everyone on the SMP hates Dream. Tobo is quite hesitant at first, as he realized both Tommy and himself only have one canon life left, meaning that if Dream was to kill them, that's it. They're gone. But Tommy insists that they need to prepare to fight Dream, as he estimates that they only have a week left until Dream returns. And if he does, then this could be the end for both of them. Eventually, Tobo agrees with Tommy, and they both move in together. They begin to prepare by creating a secret vault, which they call their secret training area. Here, they will have supplies such as Neverite armor and tools to fight Dream. January the 20th. The time has come. Dream had arranged to meet Tommy and Tobo for a quote-unquote talk. However, the members of the SMP knew that this may be the last time they see the pair forever. Punk even builds a gravestone for Tommy and Tobo in case they died at his confrontation with Dream. The two prepare for their battle, but before they do, they recall and talk about the previous wars they had had, such as the Disc War. As all the members line up on the Prime Path as a sign of honor, they say their final goodbyes and apologize for their past actions. Even Eric apologizes for that one time where he sabotaged the Manberg. Then finally, after a heartfelt moment, they both set off on their quest to retrieve the discs from Dream. After traveling for quite some time, in the distance, Tommy captures a glimpse of Dream. They both climb up the great mountain which Dream is located on until finally, they meet. Dream tries to talk, however, they don't really listen to what he has to say, and instead they try to attack him. Very quickly, they realize that he may not even have the discs on him, and so they try speaking to him instead. But this didn't go very well. Dream decided to taunt them both by towering up and playing Mellow High in a jukebox, encased by Obsidian. But not all hope is lost. Tommy and Tobo have a plan. Whilst Tommy purposely distracts Dream, Tobo sneaks up behind in an attempt to retrieve the disc. However, this does not work. So Tommy decides to step in. Tobo manages to knock Dream off of the tower, and Tommy climbs up. He mines the obsidian and snatches the disc. He has it, or so he thought. The fight went on for a little longer, until Dream begins to laugh, saying that he didn't even use any of his potions or golden apples yet. He takes Tobo hostage, demanding a disc back from Tommy in exchange for his best friend's life. He is torn between what to choose. Tobo pleads to Tommy, saying, take the disc, I will sacrifice myself. But he refuses, and gives the disc back to Dream. Dream laughs, telling the pair that the disc was fake anyways, and to rub it in even more, he blows the discs up. Dream forces the two to be stripped of all of their belongings, just as he did whilst Tommy was in exile. The pair have no leverage over him, as they are weak and fearful. They both throw all of their gear into a hole, and Dream blows their stuff up. After this, they are powerless, so Dream has control. He takes them into a secret layer hidden inside of a mountain. They step onto an elevator and descend into a huge 
Blackstone Vault. Here, Dream keeps all of the server's most prized possessions, including Robosheep Friend, Tommy's Cow Henry, his discs, the Axe of Peace, and much more. He then does an evil villain speech for about 30 minutes, saying how he's going to kill Tubbo, until out of nowhere, through the Never Portal gates, backup is here. The entire SMP came to save Tommy and Tubbo. It was like something out of Endgame. The group forces Dream to drop all of his belongings, and gives them to Tommy. With all of his hatred and anger towards Dream, he threatens to kill him. Dream pleads for mercy, saying, you won't kill me, but Tommy does. Dream loses one of his three cannon lives. When he respawns in the vault, Tommy kills him again. He now has one cannon life left. When Dream spawns again, he tries to run. But this time, Tommy goes to take away his final life. Just as Tommy's about to kill him, Dream reveals he can revive people. He convinces Tommy that if he lets him live, he will revive Wilbur. Tommy agrees, despite not even knowing if the revival book is real. However, Sam decided it is a good idea to have Dream locked up in the Dream SMP prison, also known as the Pandora's Vault. This is the most secure prison... <coughs> uh, well... It's a pretty good prison. For the past four months, Dream has been locked up in this prison. And still to this day, he is. But much more has happened than this. So let's carry on with our story. February the 21st. Trapped. It's been over a month now since Dream has been locked up in prison. However, every day Tommy is still reminded of the bad things Dream has done. And so, he decides he will visit him for the final time in prison to get rid of these thoughts playing on his mind. Fast forward a little bit, and Tommy's in the cell with Dream. All is normal. Or so we think. He explains to Dream how this is his last time ever visiting him. But Dream doesn't seem that bothered. He says, ah well, forever is a long time. I'm sure you'll come back in the future. It's pretty creepy to be honest. He explains to Tommy that he wants the server to be one big happy family. But Tommy says, you've ruined your chance of that by hurting many people and causing destruction. This is weird because Dream is trying to be nice. Which, if you don't watch the SMP much, well, we don't see this very often. He was obviously trying to play a sympathy trick on Tommy, to try and get him to like him and feel bad for him. As Tommy says his final goodbye and goes to leave the cell, we hear TNT explosions from above the cell. Being on a forgetting you. What the f? What? Holy sh! Obviously, Tommy is freaked out and didn't know what was happening. However, funnily enough, Dream is very calm and didn't care whatsoever. You may be thinking, what does it matter if TNT is going off? Well, when you enter the prison, you have to sign a waiver. That says if anything goes wrong or if there are any security breaches, the vault will go into a lockdown. And if you are inside, then you are trapped until it is fixed. Tommy is screaming at Sam the warden to let him out, but there's no answer back. Him and Dream begin arguing. Tommy shouting at him asking, did you know about this? Did you plan it? After much more calling for help, Tommy realises he's imprisoned with Dream. It's now one week later, and Tommy is still trapped with Dream. We see the two, and they seem to be getting on all right. <laughs> nah, I'm lying. They, they, they weren't. You come and you be there disrespectful, no you be annoying, you be a little b and there's you no to complain, you talk to me. Not a little Dream and Tommy begin arguing once again, but this time, it was bad. They end up shouting and even punching each other until Tommy gets low on health. He begins panicking and screaming at Dream to stop as he's on half a heart. But he doesn't. Dream takes one last punch and kills Tommy. He was beaten to death. Tommy's dream ended there. He lost his final canon life. But it's a dream SP, and Tommy gets revived just a few days later. Wait, what? He got revived? Said the revival book is true? Dream is a wizard? Yeah, I know, it's a lot to take in, I get it. But get used to it, because this is the dream SP. Anything happens! Dream had managed to recite the revival book and memorize it all allowing him to revive anyone, anywhere, without the book. Tommy's now back alive and more confused than ever, but the entire of the SMP think he's dead. No one knows he's been revived. They were all told by Sam that he'd been beaten to death by Dream. Tommy begins to describe what death is like. He says how it is horrible and he was dead for months. However, he wasn't. In fact, he was only dead for around a week, so we know that time is longer in the afterlife. He begins to explain how he spoke to all of the people who were dead on the server. These are people such as Wilbur, Schlatt, and Mexican Dream. He tells Dream to never revive Wilbur, as he is a bad man now. But Dream, being the absolute maniac he is, tells Tommy that he will revive Wilbur, and he will help him escape the Pandora's Vault. Not long after his revival, Sam visits the cell and sees that Tommy is alive. He quickly rescues him, and they have an argument. But that's irrelevant, so let's move on to the most recent event that has taken place on the Dream SMP. 17th of March, the visit. Quackity decided to visit Dream in the prison with one simple goal, to know the knowledge of the revival book. The reason for this is to revive Schlatt. Him and Ghost Schlatt, also known as Glatt, had a bet. Whoever wins in a gambling game has to work for the other. 
And well, Shalat must have won, because now Quackity is trying to retrieve the revival bug. Quackity convinced Sam to allow him to bring weapons into the prison. With these, it will make it a lot easier to retrieve their knowledge. Totally not because he's going to torture him. Your last day in fucking prison. Hell, Dream. How did you- Hey, don't, don't do that, don't do that. Dream told Quackity that he won't tell him anything. However, Quackity said that he will visit Dream every week until he told him all he knows. And that's about it. But not enough major events have really happened for me to cover them. Besides, who cares about a stupid egg?